Today's guest is Ken Tondraman of Pictures Plus. Aloha everyone, thank you for joining us for our next episode of Hawaii Leads, where we interview leaders, entrepreneurs, affluent, dominators, and skilled. My next guest is Ken Unterman of Pictures Plus. Aloha, Justine. And the reason I have him on the show is that him and his wife, Lori Unterman, have a fabulous story of their humble beginnings and how they started in Hawaii. In the beginning, you took like 7,000 pieces of art and you sold it at the swap meet, and within seven weeks you were sold out. So what made you pick that uh, product line for you and your wife to start out on your entrepreneurial uh, journey? Well, first of all, my wife would blame me for choosing that product, and she uh, she says, and she's probably right, like I, I would always dream it up and she would make it happen. So she was the real worker. Mm. Um, she's camera shy, a lot, a lot better looking than I am, but she's camera shy, so that's why she's not here. So I'll speak for both of us. Okay. Um, the short answer is I, I have always been, all of my entrepreneurial journeys have all been opportunistic. Mm -hmm. So everything that I've done has all been based on identifying opportunities in the market mm -hmm. where I, I feel like we can exploit an opportunity, whether it's a product that's uh, no one else has brought to market, it's a price, it's a service, whatever it is, it's usually trying to exploit the way things have conventionally been done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as far as the art, for, um, the, the art, was it exported here to Hawaii? Yeah, so what happened was, uh, and it kind of depends on which beginning when we talk about where we started, mm -hmm. uh, I was, uh, we were buying and selling things from auctions, uh, mm. and that was going fairly well, but then we'd run out of it and I'd have to find something new. So there was a, there was a product being sold at uh, closed gas stations on corners, mm. uh, this very low-end art uh, that was being sold, and I thought it would be great for the swap meet. So I thought, well, that's a perfect product because mm -hmm. it's well-priced, it's good value, and it's not at the swap meet. Mm -hmm. So that's really what inspired me, and I did the homework and research. I was before the internet, and so you couldn't yeah, find things. Yeah, because we're talking, what, 1986, 1986, mid -80s? yes, pre-cell phones. Way before all technology. Prehistoric. They had no Google to research. They had cars back then, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, it found out that 7,000 was the minimum. Wow. Uh, that it was $35,000. Mm -hmm. um, I had a couple partners at the time and said, hey, now we're kind of a real business and mm -hmm. they said, we're out, we're just mm -hmm. out of college. Whoa. And so that was kind of the beginning of the journey. Right, right, right. So as far as picking a swap meet, um, I guess because you guys didn't have this capital to open a store, is that why you started there? Actually, the, the original beginning was um, when I was uh, given a bunch of goods from the Ford Motor Company. I helped mm -hmm. them with, a, with an event they did here and they had a bunch of leftover goods and they gave them to us for free as opposed to shipping it back would be more expensive wow. and so I was buying and selling that at the swap meet so that's really where we, how we started at the swap meet so mm -hmm. we we started buying and selling things at the swap meet we graduated into picture frames well let me ask you this what what do you think made you so successful that you sold seven thousand in seven weeks because that's quite a bit you know, I think, I think as an entrepreneur, where it really starts is you've got to have a conviction and a belief. You really have to believe in what it is that you think that you're doing or why it's so special or so unique because often many others don't believe it. And mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. and even sometimes you wake up wondering how you're believing that. But exactly. uh, I just had a deep conviction uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that this would do really well mm -hmm, and was mm -hmm. willing to take what looked like a giant risk Mm -hmm. because the Barrett entry was a full container. They didn't sell them wow. in any smaller quantity. So mm -hmm. we had to take that risk, but I was convinced that at that price point that we were would be able to sell them. Now we're talking 1986 and in Hawaii, we didn't have the, oh, we had we still had the cam drive-in swap meet. Which one did you? The, you this was the Aloha Stadium, Aloha but, Stadium, but really good point. One huge difference back then was competition. We didn't mm. have Costco, Kmart, Walmart. That's true. Uh, it was Sears and a couple. So the market was really underserved for value mm -hmm. back then, mm -hmm. which it's not today. And you recognize that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for example, there's no way I would do that today just mm -hmm. because with the competition, we would not be able to have the success we were fortunate enough to have back then right. because of the limited competition. 
right, right, right. So after you you did that uh, seven weeks of selling all of that, what was the next step after that? I mean, because then it's proven that you're able to move these items. Yeah, so great question. Then it was a matter of really needing financing, right? And so mm -hmm. I went to the bank and they were all jazzed up and said, hey, no problem. And they probably went to a superior and said, wait a minute, at what point are they going to saturate picture frames mm -hmm. here in Hawaii? Mm -hmm. um, so we were able to get limited financing and then just with hard work, we kept buying and selling containers. Mm -hmm. And then that led us to a lot of demand for locally manufactured, which we kind of people know us for today is the locally manufactured coal wood and other frames. Right, right. And, and before I get into that, I know that capital, all my other guests said make sure you have enough capital. I'm going to be uh, interviewing Jane Sawyer, who's a director of SBA. And I mentioned that I was going to interview today and you today. And she goes, I remember the Unterman. I, yes, Jane, uh, she, she's been around for a long time. It doesn't mm -hmm. look like it, but she's been around for a long time and was very helpful. We, we started with SBA loans. Now, do you recommend that to people starting out? I, absolutely. The S, we would not be able to employ the people we employ today and have had the success we've been fortunate enough to have, mm -hmm. uh, especially back then. Um, SBA played a vital role. Wayne Takahashi of Bank of Hawaii at the time was an amazing banker. He's since retired. Mm -hmm. But without that relationship, without Wayne and without SBA uh, and Bank of Hawaii at the time, there's no way we could be where we are today. Right, and that's a small business administration, and it's through the government, and they have lots of resources. So what would you recommend to people looking into getting into entrepreneurship? that would be the first stop for them to go to for capital yes i think the sba is a, is, is a really good vehicle because mm -hmm. it liberates the normal standards because it's backed by the government so it's usually mm -hmm. backed like by 90 percent. so the bank is taking a, a much more mitigated risk I see. but for us it really comes down to the banker and mm -hmm. uh, again i can't see, sing wayne takahashi's praises enough he he made it That's so simple there, there's mounds and mounds of paperwork and as a small business person it's hard That's to navigate that yeah so yeah. it really comes down to having a great banker mm -hmm. and then as far as writing a business plan were you required to do that as well you know what's funny um i don't remember that part of it as much so i you know, everybody always asks me that question but yeah. we didn't have a lot of we didn't make a lot of business plans. It was more gut mm. instincts, to be mm -hmm. to be perfectly honest. But but it's a yeah. great thing to do. I'm I'm yes. I'm not not recommending. It. I'm recommending it. I'm just being honest that we didn't do that. I see. I see. But yeah, I I've talked to so far a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, and it's the gut instinct. And yes. one of the things I interviewed Kim Taylor Reese, and he he said, find something you love, and it'll be like a vacation every day. Now you don't, you know, you don't. Um, that doesn't wipe away any challenges, but because it's such a passion, you're willing to do all the, all the work that needs to be done. Like the early days, how many how many hours do you think you put in? Um, I don't think it's changed, but uh, no, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, no. I mean, you'd work 70, 80 hours a week, whatever it takes to get things done, and mm -hmm. and unfortunately, I, I still work too much. Um, but but you're correct. I mean, if you really enjoy what you're doing, mm -hmm. and you enjoy the people that you do it with. It's not really like work. I mm -hmm, mean, I'm 55 mm -hmm. years old. I don't have an exit plan. I'm not proud of that, but it's partly oh because gosh, of what you I'm just said. I'm you know, 55 with no exit plan. Yeah, <laughs> but it's it's really because I mean, it's it's a lame excuse, but it's because I've enjoyed what I've done so much. I haven't right. been concerned with that. And you just that. evolve. Right. You notice that you evolve. You watch the market and everything. So going back to the Koa Wood. Um, I know that was a huge success, all the koa, solid koa wood. Uh, talk a little bit about that because it is from Hawaii and then get into where it had to go to laminate because of the scarcity. Yes, yeah, so um, that's that story can be long or short. I'll do the shorter version for time's sake. Mm -hmm. um, we were having great success with um, the value in a koa wood frame mm, because it was very expensive. It's beautiful. Beautiful wood limited resource, but I could see at the time we were, uh, we actually bought 1300 acres, had a vertical manufacturing, wow. milled the wood, dried the wood. We did everything. Mm -hmm. And my team at the time was kind of like, why are we going to veneer? So, so veneer is a very thinly sliced wood. Yeah, but I'm as sorry, I, veneer, I said laminate. Yeah, laminate yeah. is a man-made, yeah. a lot of people get that confused. Yeah, okay, but veneer. Yeah, no problem. It's, so uh, as I looked ahead, I thought, 
you know, we don't, you don't really need a solid picture frame. It's not the best way to utilize the very scarce resource mm -hmm. that we have here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And so with the veneer, we're able to get 40 times, right. the, so 40 times more people could enjoy it. We were better utilizing, it was better for the environment, it was more sustainable. And so we pioneered that 20 something years ago. I know that had to evolve because it was all in the news about how they were, and then also, uh, does it give it, a, it gave it a better price point too? As yes, well? well it gave it stability, it gave it a better price point, it gave us more scale. Mm -hmm. It was really the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And I think as we look now and, and how, more, how much more conscientious we are about sustainability, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really proud of that. I had to go to, I flew to Italy. The Italians at the time, they, they make the finest furniture and they're, wow. they're the best at veneers. So they had the most progressive uh, picture frame veneers. So we'd actually have the veneers, the wood cut here. We would send the cants, they're called, mm -hmm. the square logs to Ohio because they sliced koa better than anybody in the world. And then mm -hmm. we'd have the veneer shipped to Italy because the Italians did the best they job the at the best. finish, yeah. and then they brought back to Hawaii. It's like it's almost koa going around the right, world. Right. Wow, that's Some people say, "Well, gosh, that's a lot a circuitous route." Mm -hmm. However, um, I just the koa wood is one of the most beautiful woods in the it world, is. and I think for us to really honor that, allow it to be enjoyed by as many people as possible. And it's really what we've been about is to try and have as many people. Enjoy, enjoy koa wood mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I think that's what you were known for I used to go to your Pearl City Pearl City Highlands location um, talk about your locations and I, I believe you also have a manufacturing place in Kapolei right yeah so there's been a lot of evolutions um, currently we have five uh, pictures plus stores one of them is called pictures plus prints that's mm -hmm. a direction that we're going we recently closed our Pearl Highlands store mm -hmm. uh, it was too big mm. um, and we moved it to Kapolei uh, now it's more of a printing facility we're sitting here in Kakaako we right. moved this is a this is your new location yeah so really excited about this location because we think that we're more for lack of a better word millennial Lesk, if that's a word. <laughs> and you have all these condos being built around I mean you're just surrounded with all these new condos that will need to be you know, yeah, hope, hopefully, and we've got some uh, we've got some great artists now, and we print on all sorts of different mediums. So there's a lot of things that be bold, but probably mm -hmm. the biggest recent evolution is really the printing phenomenon for us. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're now printing customers' images and artists' images wow. on all sorts of different mediums, framed or unframed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because with technology, even the images on our phone are so beautiful. It is the, like the iPhone. In fact, we're doing a backup uh, on our iPhone right now because it's that good yeah, yeah 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 we've got two cameras one's an iPhone yeah <laughs> so um, you also talked about uh, before we went on air about not only your uh, pictures plus but your you also have other uh, venues or entities yeah so um, as picture framing has waned in demand fewer mm -hmm. people again there's kind of two drivers for us one is the demographics I'm a baby boomer, and so baby boomers are buying fewer frames than millennials mm. like things simpler. No kidding. Uh, they're oh. not as into big houses and framing as, as we were. Um, and so we're trying to follow those trends. That's mm -hmm. why we're offering printing. And then technology is a big driver, too. And so mm -hmm. now that you have such beautiful digital images, it makes right. a lot more sense to mm -hmm. reproduce those. And so as framing diminished, really thought, what is what our else? what you know what is our core competency what mm -hmm. do we really do well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so we think that our core competency is mass customization uh, for people's homes and mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that led me into believing again that closets and cabinets and interior sliding doors were interior sliding door that's just a picture frame with glass in it right wow, that's yeah. what I talked myself into yeah yeah I've yeah. since learned it's a little more complicated <laughs> um, so we've we've we're now the franchisee for California Closets. We have a brand called Exotic wow. Woodlines, mm -hmm. and then the Sliding Door Company is another brand that we represent at the, our Kahala Mall showroom. Mm -hmm. uh, those businesses all, are all growing double digits wow. um, as our picture framing business has continued to soften a little bit over the years. So you've taken the whole evolution of like all entrepreneurs. They find like. Um, for instance, again, going back to Kim Taylor Reese, when it went from film to digital, he actually took off for a year because mm. he had to figure out how am I going to do the same effect 
as you know as the film versus a digital and he just had to evolve around the whole technology just like you did yeah no it's been it's been a tough evolution i mean just competition in retail retail is changing so quickly mm -hmm. and it's really people and, get and, and all online as well yeah and, and yeah. a lot of people get think it's online but it's actually to me it's if you look at a, at a like a root cause it's it's a technology phenomenon that mm. we're dealing with so mm -hmm. it's the technology that's changing everything mm -hmm. changing our behavior exactly. uh, changing how we buy ie online mm -hmm. um, changing our desire to vacation more because you can look and research and see things right. and you can book your own flight you don't have to go through a travel agent right, so it's really right. the technology slash demographic changes that are changing business it's been 31 years for me and the speed of change especially it's in retail so quick. yeah it's uh it's very hard to keep up with mm -hmm. it so what do you what is your advice to uh would-be entrepreneurs or those who who have been doing something for a while and they notice a change what would be your advice to them in today's market well, a couple things. It depends if you're on the front of the spear or the back of the spear, meaning like you think you have a new idea mm -hmm. that based on changing, shifting demands is going to come into vogue. Mm -hmm. Then I think, hey, pursue that as judiciously as possible. Mm -hmm. um, really look at everything. On the flip side, I think the, the, the saddest thing I see is when people have, the, for lack of a better kind of their head in the sand, and they think, oh, oh well, it's temporary, it's gonna change. So let's say you've had a, a very vibrant business and suddenly with the market changes, you're on the wrong end right, of the right. demand, mm -hmm. and then you think it's gonna change, mm -hmm. and, and you have to start changing quickly to get ahead it's, of it. Uh, just like Blockbuster. Yes, Blockbuster. What happened to yeah. them, that's a great example. It's a very good example mm -hmm. where they you know, bet on the wrong thing. Right? Yeah. I mean, I look at Sears right now, if you think about it, Sears should be Amazon mm -hmm. because if you think about retail shifting catalogs were the internet right, right and you think right. well okay, this every this, Christmas we got the big one yeah <laughs> we're old enough to talk about that <laughs> um, but the catalog business was online it was very disruptive at the time people got these catalogs and they could they didn't have to go to a store they could order and have it mailed right. to them right and that was pretty nifty back then it was and it's really the same thing as online but mm -hmm. now on the catalog is now in our, it's electronic, right? right? And it, right. so it's the technology piece. And so Sears should have been that, not mm -hmm. Amazon, mm -hmm. but they didn't adjust and adapt fast enough. And now they're in the midst of going extinct. Right, and as far as online, um, as far as your online sales and volume, do you see that evening out with your retail stores or your retail sales are still you know, prominent in that area. We're, we call it kind of omni-channel and brick and click, and so we're very bricky. You know, we still have a lot yes. of retail stores. Uh, we made an active investment about a year ago. Um, it's hard, it, it takes a lot of resources, it takes a lot of money, it takes a lot of skill set, and so we've really tried to adapt. We've gotten, excuse me, a lot, a lot better in the last year, mm -hmm. but we're still probably 90% uh, brick and mortar and 10% uh, web-based, but mm -hmm. we're aggressively pursuing the web piece. Right, so it kind of balances out. But I, I used to always love going to your Pearl City Highlands, and it was like going to a gallery. And like you said, it was lots of square footage. Yeah. And you could spend like an hour and just be in awe of all the nooks and crannies that you filled, right. um, along with the furniture that you started carrying. Right. Do you still carry furniture? Uh, we much? not as much. Uh, that didn't do as well for us. It was very labor and. Intensive. So we're doing mm -hmm. a lot more cabinets mm -hmm. and closets because uh, we've invested in a lot of high technology machinery mm -hmm. that allows us to do that with great precision very efficiently, whereas the uh, furniture ended up being very handcrafted and mm -hmm. with the labor shortages here it was difficult to, to be at the price points we wanted to be at. Yeah. Um, with your intuition and everything, even when you had that uh, entrepreneurial eye, did you have a mentor that helped you along the way? You know, there's not one single mentor, but uh, probably one of the big pieces of advice I have is, is learning from others who have had experience mm -hmm. in what it is you're endeavoring to do. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, a gentleman, uh, Dick Gushman, who, who tries to stay below the radar is probably one of the smartest people I know. And so mm -hmm. when it comes to real estate and leases, 
learn so much from Dick, and he's just such a gracious, humble, super intelligent guy. It sounds we, like you had a great network of people. Yeah, at no, all times. that's a good point. Is is really, really, you know, but developing those relationships mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. people who are, you know, in my case, smarter than me, way more experienced. Because there's a learning curve that you go through no matter what On you do. Yes. And yes. so, for example, when I built a custom home, I talked to every contractor and every homeowner that built a home to mm -hmm. learn about all of the challenges they had, mm -hmm. trying to mitigate some of those risks and, and right. hopefully learn from what they did right and wrong. And really learning from what we do wrong, some preventing those mistakes right. is invaluable. On everything. Yes. On everything. In life, period, right? right? I tell my I tell my kids the most important decision you make is who you marry. Exactly. And, and oh, I want to get on that point. First of all, um, your son opened his own business. Yes. And um, Banan. Yes. And I actually drove by there yesterday. Oh, great! Uh, across the UH uh -huh. because my daughter had a volleyball game at St. Francis. But anyway, um, do you think? that just by watching the two of you, you and your wife, that it drove him? Or it just, do you have more than one child? Or uh, Yeah, no, I've got, I've got a daughter. Our daughter in, works in our business, Alexa. And oh, then our okay. son, Luke, okay. wanted to do his own thing, yeah. which we totally support. That's good. Um, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure being around, uh, you know, myself and my wife and seeing what we did and the crazy hours we worked, mm -hmm. um, maybe is why he's not in our business or maybe why he has his own business. I'm not, yeah. I'm not really sure, but uh, yeah, I'm sure there are some, a few things that rubbed off on him for sure. Yeah, yeah. And then also you mentioned about marrying the right person. Um, the longevity of you being married all these years is a rarity in itself, just being married. But keeping the glue together for a business, um, how did you guys, how did, how did the two of you find a way to work? Are you both opposites so that you play off each other? Or yes, very perceptive. We, we definitely, I, th I think it made it easier. Was it, you're right, it's a really, it can be really challenging. Yes. Um, but Lori, my wife, is, is a, a nurse by trade. She went to UH and had, uh, got a nursing degree. Um, and then when she had a pregnant with our first child, Alexa, and then was working full-time in her business, full-time as a nurse, she says, okay, wow. something's got to give. Yeah. Fortunately, it was nursing for us because she's just an amazing contributor um, and so, yes, it really was uh, complimentary. So we, mm -hmm. we know our roles. We know our mm -hmm. roles in our marriage. We know our roles at home, domestically. That's we know amazing. our roles in business. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't have married a more amazing, fabulous woman for sure. So that's some great tips for all of you young people out there or some of you starting all over again. It's the person that you marry. Yeah, no, I'm mean, absolutely. Hey, if, if you mess everything else up, if you if you get the marriage piece right, life is great. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, any last words to our viewers out there? Some expansion. Where do you see yourself going here in the near future? Yeah, so we'll we'll start there and then and then end with a few thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a brand called Island Soul, um, mm. and so what we really see, the my big passion and push right now is for made in Hawaii products. Mm, and so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the goal is to make more and more here in Hawaii. So whether it's cabinets, closets, printing, framing, we really want to grow the, the local manufacturing that's piece. Great. So that that's kind of what I'm proud of and the direction that we're going. Uh, we get to leverage all the amazing local art that we mm -hmm. have. So we have a product called Art on Demand and customers can order things on canvas and metal and framed or unframed. And so we're real proud of that. And we're bringing some of those products to the tourist uh, trade wow. with some of our stores in Waikiki. Mm -hmm. um, so that's sort of the direction of the company. Uh, just a few words of, of caution, advice, mm -hmm. experience, call it what you want to. Mm -hmm. um, I think one thing that I see is if you really want to own your own business, you know, the sooner you can get started, it doesn't get easier. Probably right. one of the things I've witnessed is where people have a good job and they, then they start a family. Right, they want to get their ducks in a row. Yeah. It doesn't work that way with entrepreneurship. It, you don't get your ducks in a row. You learn as you go. You just have to dive in. Yeah, and, and uh, for yeah, exactly. If I had if I had waited too long, and then you're earning better money, and then you know you're kind of starving when you start. And so it's much easier to starve <laughs> without a family and without a very big home and without a yeah. lot of overhead. So mm -hmm. I think that's one big thing. 
is you know That's the a great tip, sooner actually. you can get started. And, and I mentioned it earlier, and I just really want to mention it again is okay. whether it's a mentor, uh, but really talk to people. You know, be real open, and it's amazing how much people will share with you. A lot mm -hmm. of times, you think, "Well, that might be my competitor, or they're not going to tell me this." Right. People are really open, and I have a belief in Hawaii that you know the more we can help ourselves as a community right. the better like in our cabinet business i'd love to get all the cabinet manufacturers together and say hey how do we help each other because the competition is not another cabinet manufacturer the competition mm. is off island 90 percent mm -hmm. of our cabinets get imported if not 95. so i'm not worried about the cabinet shop across the street he right. or she doesn't need to worry about us mm -hmm. we need to worry about the cabinets being made in california and washington and china and every in, in Europe, you know, right, so right, right. I think the more we can think globally and the more we can help each other, uh, the more successful we'll be as a community. Mm -hmm. Do you belong to any organizations that allow you to come together with these people? Yeah, I'm these always I'm always available. I've done things for UH and HPU and whether it's business classes or mm -hmm. entrepreneurial mm -hmm. classes, etc. And I'm an, a member of what's called YPO Young Presidents Organization. Mm -hmm. That's probably been the most amazing, beneficial. It's peers uh, with businesses over $10 million, and you just learn so much from one another. Mm -hmm. uh, you you think all your problems you are... You mastermind. Well, together, and you think right? your problems are exclusive to you. Like, oh, I only have... I'm the only one that has employee problems. Like, no. Oh, no. It's <laughs> the, the, the people I've interviewed, it's the employee thing. Yeah. yeah. And, but how do you manage that? You know, yeah. and, and whether it's that or banking relationships or landlords that are onerous. I mean, all the challenges Leases you have as business. And yeah. again, it goes back to the theme of... These other people have navigated those waters, mm -hmm. and if they can help you navigate the waters, it's that much easier. Yeah. Well, you know what? Those are all golden nuggets for all of the viewers out there, even if you're not in business. Anytime that you go to an establishment and uh, realize all the work and the, the sweat and the love that go into it so you can enjoy. So I want to thank you so much, Yeah, Kent, thank you. Yeah, it's a pleasure being on, on your show. show. Yeah, thank yeah, you very much. Yeah, that was very, very informative, and I hope you got a lot from that. And after every show, we like to shaka out. And for the audience on listening on iTunes, we say ahui ho until we meet again. Ahui ho. Thank <laughs> you.